This is John Matarazzo with Charisma News, and I am excited to hear what God is saying for 2023. And Dr. Paula Price is with me right now because God has given her a word to share for 2023. Dr. Price, welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you here. What is God saying? <laughs> well, I want to say to you, thank you for inviting me. I'm enthusiastic about what God is saying and what he's doing. And what I hope to come out of this time today, John, is that people recognize some things about the Almighty that we don't consider. For example, everything that I've been hearing from the Lord has been about God's future. He said to me, coming out the gate in the top of this year, he said, but you know, there are pursuing and they're petitioning me about their future but I have a future I'm contending with what I'm contending with their past what they've allowed what they've caused to happen what they did not even understand should have been prevented and so as we as God and I began to talk he said I need you to ready my people for my future I often recall August uh, 2017 when God dropped on me when I was in Joliet, Illinois, saying that a hard reset is coming. At that point, who knew? And But he kept saying it. He said, I'm telling you, the whole world is going into a hard reset. I'm resetting the planet. So when he said that, I was all excited. I mean, because we thought it was good because we have an optimistic God. We have a gospel that tells us if it's good, it's God, and if it's not good, according to our estimation, then it is not God. So from 2017 all the way up to 2020, I was stunned, but I said, oh, hard reset is going to be great. This will be wonderful. Well, 2020 did hit us, and we ended up with the COVID slam. And what we didn't realize was how devastating COVID was going to be to us. For example, shutting our churches down, of course, losing our loved ones and all of those kinds of things. And our immediate response was, mine included, that wasn't God. And the Holy Spirit stopped me. And he said, well, if it's not me, then I'm not Alpha and Omega. So you're going to have to come to terms with it being me or not. So he began to speak to me about that. We came through COVID. As we were nearing this year, God began to tell me, get my people ready because what we sow is what we grow. The scripture is very clear that if we sow to the flesh, we will of the flesh reap corruption. He began to talk to me about all of these declarations that we're in the apocalypse and that the apocalypse is upon us. God, let me know that is not true. We're not in the apocalypse, not by their standards. We have been pushed by headlines and headlines have caused us to say we're in the apocalypse. We're in the last days, John. We're not in the final days. We're not even in good end times. We're more somewhere around Matthew 24, where God said the beginning of birth pains. So yes, but it is going to be very difficult for us as Christians. Now, our job as ministers and, and as frontliners, such as yourself, is going to be to help the, the body of Christ shift from its happy time gospel to its realities. The reality is that God cannot allow the planet to slide. So there are things he's going to postpone. He's postponing a lot of our prayers. He's postponing or he's negating a lot of our prophecies because he has to save the planet so that he can continue continue to rescue his church and his body. I'm talking about the ecclesia corporate, not, not so much congregation by congregation, because as we've seen, he shut down congregations. So people ask me, and I was just in a meeting where they asked me, again, are we in the apocalypse? Well, if we're talking about the book of Revelation, if that is our instrument then and our guide, then we have to conclude that we're not in the la we're not in the seals yet. I mean, we're not in the trumpets yet. We're not in the vials. We're not in the three woes. We're not there yet. We're not in the mark of the beast. We're nowhere near those things. And the, the church is being panicked, and I would dare say punked by premature affirmation. We're not there. We are in the seals. When you read the book of Revelation, we are in the seals, meaning we have not yet hit the sixth seal. Now we're heading toward it because the earth is groaning. Cosmic and seismic disasters are happening. So we, we know that, but we are not there yet. And I'm speaking to this also answering whether or not the church goes through the tribulation. But the sixth seal is where we are. Now we have to understand that because when the sixth seal is open, it says that there is a global earthquake and a cosmic 
shower. The stars from the heaven will fall. That's what it tells us. And that the whole earth would be, mountains moving out of the way, would be destroyed. Humanity will be driven underground, living in caves. But here's the upside of that. And that is that the Lord Jesus and God the Father are rolling because the heavens are gone. Remember, the heavens are gone with this earthquake. Will rule the world from their heavens. Now, at that point, God also taps 144,000 and he rescues in Revelation 7, he raptures his multinational church. So are we in the last days? No. Are we in end times? We most certainly are. But we have got to stop rushing the clock because the more we errantly affirm that we're in the last days, the more darkness manipulates a counterfeit uh, to what God is really doing. So um, I'm ready to open questions, but I just want to say that I have several teachings and I have written articles on this if anyone is interested. But I want you to know it, we cannot treat the revelation or the apocalypse like it's a single conglomerate event. It is not. It is not. It, it's not uh, sequential. It is not layered. It literally will take eons for a global earthquake to give place to the rest of the book of Revelation. Wow. That's a lot to take in. And I, I, I love what you were saying, that we are in the end times, but not the last days. Is that, did I say that right? You did. Okay. We're in the end times, but not the last days. And there's a bit of a distinction there. But I, I really liked your, admoni your admonition about not rushing the clock, because that's something that I feel like we do so much of, um, where we just look at, at the end and say, we know how the book ends, but we forget that the, the last chapter is still important. The last chapter is often where the battle is won. The last chapter is the most intense part of the book where the hero does win. And yes, we know how it ends, but you know we want to be a part of what God's plan to get to that end is. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to know how, how we're going to get there. You right, know, I right. teach when I teach prophets and I teach the prophetic, I start with the statement, we everything Earth starts at Omega. It doesn't start at Alpha. Everything mm. we do in this world is God's Omega. And then as each generation is born, then he rolls Omega back through the eras and generations that they apply to till he gets to Alpha. So Alpha has to kick off over and over and over again. Now, why is it a big deal that we are able to say we're not at the end time? Here's the deal. The, the sixth seal is a very interesting thing. I would love one day for God's scientists and astronomers and cosmologists to really consider that, to fall, to pull away from the table of, hey, it's all over, we're out. And as you just said, we win. Because think about the, the astronomical, the biological, the cosmological effect of a whole planet being destroyed by an earthquake. Water's gone, light's gone, the sun has stopped shining, the earth has stopped spinning, the moon is turned to blood. Think about, if we look at that, just look at that, and we take and take the sensationalism out of it and take the you know the prophet with the the largest voice in the mic out of it we have to look at a very tragic but staggering effect meaning that everybody existing before the sixth seal is either going to be raptured or as well and and and, and before the rapture we're all going to deal with that earthquake, whatever generation that is alive at the time. So we're talking about radioactivity being crazy, people giving birth to radioactive children and offspring. God has to really hold the planet together until he can heal it. I mean, this thing is not a blink of the eye. Hmm. And we make it sound like it's a nine month ordeal. You know, First the, the uh, earthquake, then the trumpets, and then the woes, and then the vows, and then it's over. That is, that is the text, but reality playing out in a 24-7, well, during, after the earthquake, won't even be 24-7, but reality playing out in real life is an entirely different event and a different result. The outcome is staggering. So the church that actually gets raptured is not the one we're talking about today. Hmm. So the church that's getting raptured, 
which church is that then? Because the, 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 and what is the distinction between the church from today and the church from Revelation there? Well, the church is getting raptured right now. We're dying in faith in God. Okay, when we die, we die in the Lord. Blessed are the ones who die in the Lord today. If we, you know, it, uh, and what do you call it? We, if, as Jesus says it so well, if we endure to the end, then we are all one by one. I'm using that as an example, but we one by one are dying and we sleep in Christ. Those of us who are alive, for example, if the rapture doesn't come in tomorrow, then, you know, I would say that if the rapture doesn't come tomorrow, we're pre trip if the rapture comes after that, then guess what? We were the chosen. But if you, I, I want to focus in, John, help, just, just help me focus. And I want to focus in on the fact that the earthquake is a defining moment. Mm -hmm. It defines. And it says after that earthquake that there was silence in heaven for the space of a, what, a half hour. Well, when you calculate a half hour on God's thousand years as a day, then you're talking about there's a, a spate of time where God is orientating us to his world. The first rapture is going to take us to his temple. He said they're in the temple serving God day and night. These are real factors that we don't want to biologize. We don't want to geologize. We don't want to scientize. Science mm -hmm. itself is going to tell you when, a, when an earthquake hits on a small scale, what are the results? What are the effects of that earthquake on the community? We just had one in California. Right, what does that right. look like? What is that like? How long will it take California to recover from that? Remember the last big one they had took decades for them to mm -hmm. recover from. So we are, what we're talking about is if we don't come back, back up this thing and go back to the sixth seal, the global earthquake. And unless, you know, you're a journalist, so maybe you can answer me. And unless we missed it, geologists have not told us that there is in the rocks of the earth, a, 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 a spate where uh, everything was gone. It, it, they haven't told us that yet. So unless you might know something, I don't know. But if that earthquake did yes. happen, do you know what that means? That means we missed it. And I don't think we're going to miss an earthquake for sure. <laughs> and um, I'm praying that that doesn't happen in 2023. You know, Dr. Paula Price, we've been talking about um, this, what is a little bit further down the road. But, you know, as we're wrapping up 2022 right now and heading into 2023, what are some things that people need to be looking for in 2023 that uh, just to get us ready? Well, we're the first thing I want to say, I'm so glad you asked me. I woke up yesterday morning and when I did, I was just before I opened my eyes, the Holy Spirit showed me a huge teardrop fall from heaven. And God says, I'm weeping for the earth. So he's letting us know. Now, when heaven says he's weeping, it's pretty bad. We have allowed occultism, mysticism, and witchcraft and, and magic to, to totally dominate our landscape. They're letting us know that they have all but neutralized the church. So we can expect more of this magic thing, but when you release that, when you unleash something like that, you're going to have hostility. Persecution will ramp up and, and persecution legislation is going to drive it. So unless we do a major move and we appeal to God's mercy, that's going to happen. We are going to have to deal with the same devil that Jesus destroyed on the cross that we have given power to because we have. So that's one of the things we're going to have persecution. Obviously, the earth is groaning. So we're going to have a lot more of those natural disasters, some of which are about to be very peculiar because the, the ones that God is showing me, these are those that happen when the pillars of the earth and the shields of the earth are removed. So we're going to have those natural disasters. We're going to see we're going to have to fight for the life of the next generation because these children and this pornographic academics program that they're on are going to be the future. Many of us don't realize that what we're living today are the children that hated church as kids. See, these are the same people. These are now the adults calling the shots, making the laws, and, in, and electing officials. Wow. So we're going to have to deal with darkness. We also are going to have to see that there's going to be a great push toward apostles and prophets because God always goes to war with them. So mm -hmm. he's going to do a great deal with that because of the, they, they predate the ecclesia's appearance on the earth. 
where obviously the economy will be affected. We know the economy will be affected. We know that, that what we see now is virtually nothing as they push to bankrupt our nation, but also to bankrupt the nations to force the artificial currency on us. Now, one of the things I like to talk about when we talk about the money is that we, we keep saying mark of the beast, but they're using our finger. Mark of the beast is looking for our foreheads. That's a difference altogether. Wow. And we're not the generation for that. We're talking about, um, even now, I was having a conversation about Israel and their false, their false messiah that mm -hmm. they are now uh, trying to coronate. He's 34 years old. He's got three kids. I was asking a woman to send me the article. I haven't gotten it yet. But we are going to have this season of false Christ. We've been mm -hmm. having them. And now we're going to have them because they've got the power of darkness behind them. Mm -hmm. Think about the fact that the Pope, according to an article sent to me, is going to redo the Ten Commandments. So, uh, so um, Daniel 7 is pushing in on us. Mm -hmm. We're the, the, the multi-head beast and they're changing times and seasons. They're changing ordinances and traditions and they're bringing everything under darkness. Why? For the agenda of the BC world. Mm -hmm. And see, everything that you see happening, it's in the Bible we've been told is outdated. It is what God has faced for him. We don't know when. So we're going to have that. Politics will be struggling and it will be struggling because it's even them within their own ranks are fighting to see who's going to be the power that rules the world. Meanwhile, if Christians, you know why I push for Christians to get in office and, and many of us, it's too late. If they've taken all seven mountains, and I mean, John, you have to admit, they've taken all seven mountains through tech, through big tech, through legislation and through culture. They've taken all of these mountains. We are gonna to have to scrap. And I see for a season, the church is going to be underground, having to reinvent itself to come back wiser and, and stronger than ever. I'll end on this fact, if I can. The Lord has given me um, the biotic gospel because part of why we don't, uh, part of how God's going to repair this is through his children. But these have to be the people who are truly born again, truly filled with the spirit of God and who are activated by God's spirit to out, outwit and overpower the children of darkness, the children of this age. Wow. You know, you mentioned about the, the seven mountains, and I'm just reminded of Caleb in the Bible where they took the promised land and they were divvying out the, uh, the promised land. And there was one mountain, I believe it was Hebron, that uh, he said, I want that one because there's still battle there. And mm -hmm. so I just want to encourage the body of Christ right now, based off of what you said there, that even though we've given up the mountains, it's our job to take it back because that, that is rightfully ours. That's what God has, has given it. And be like Caleb to go take that mountain, even at an mm -hmm. old age. You're not done yet. Yeah. Can I, can I speak Please. to that for a moment? Um, the mountains are not the Holy Ghost. The mountains are not sovereign, but God is. The mountains mm -hmm. are not supreme. Human culture has flipped, 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 and flipped. You know, Ecclesiastes tell us that which is has already been and that which is will be, will be again. So we're living in a recycling of God's removing or removing the darkness from us. What we need, if you ask me today, what we need, we need to come into a cohesive consensus on what, what we have to do to restore power to God's people the church there has to be classes there has to be training on the things that we've been uh, talked talked out of we've been literally untaught god's way and god's power there has to be that and that's what i think will be the call of his apostles and prophets because it all began with them god starts everything with the prophet so our task is to find out the prophets that are really running with him and who he's running with and then he finishes and he captures spirituality with his apostles. And again, we need to find that. So if I had to encourage you today, I encourage you to have your prayer groups. I encourage you to get back into your word. I encourage you to make sure that you have your new heart and your new spirit because God's going to call on it. And then I want to encourage you to believe in the Lord your God that you may be established, believe his prophets that you may prosper. But lastly, to be the strong ones who do great exploits. Don't give up on the Christ in you. Amen, amen. That is great. Don't give up on the Christ in you because he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world.
Dr. Paula Price, thank you so much for being here with the Charisma News Podcast to share what God has put on your heart, what God has spoken to you for 2023 and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage everybody to get prepared, get equipped, get trained, and get ready for what God has to come in the future. Amen. Thank you. I enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure for me. <laughs>